All right, guys, in this one, we're going to tackle multi mount hoop. What do I mean by a multi mount hoop? Uh, let's take a field trip into the shop. So, this is what I'm talking about when I say multi mount hoop. It's one very long hoop that has multiple mounts on it. And this is the alignment gadget that came with it and this particular one is a multiple point five by seven so here we have a, a five by seven alignment assistant and if i put that on there you'll see that these two holes right here line up and these two holes for the center of the 5x7 line up and the edge of the 5x7 is the dotted line for the extended multi-hoop one so same case when I slide it all the way over now this dotted line is the edge of the right hand side of the 5x7 so you can think of this multi hoop as a a single hoop that will hoop two 5x7s together with a little bit of an overlap and the other size that I'm going to look at or show you how to set up is is uh, a 4x4 four four inch multi-hoop four by four on each side that is overlapped and connected in the middle so that's this is what we're working with the four by four multi-hoop that i was talking about that comes in usually in a 10 centimeter by 17 centimeter that's 100 millimeter by 170 millimeter or approximately slightly less than four inch by 6.5 inch is what that multi hoop comes in and that will give you a four by four on each side with a little bit of overlap so the one that i have that i'm going to be designing with is a 13 centimeter by 30 centimeter it's also 130 millimeter by 300 millimeter or slightly over five inch by 12 inch and, and that is the one you saw in the little in this little shop video that's the five by seven overlapped so I'm going to show you how to set this up. The hardest part is setting it up. The good part about that is you can save that setup as a template. So every time you need to do a new multi-hoop design, you load the template and your setup is done. So that's going to be the hardest part of this video is doing that setup. I'm going to set up, show you how to set up both the 10 centimeter by 17 centimeter and the 13 centimeter by 30 centimeter because those are the two main ones and i had somebody on youtube ask for the 10 centimeter by 17 centimeter i don't have one of those so i'm going to, going to also set up a 13 centimeter by 30 centimeter which i do have so here we go the first thing to do is you want to uh, set your page which i think is in file document properties it's going to give you this document properties here you want to set your width and your height depending on if you're doing it landscape or portrait I almost always design in landscape sometimes not uh, set this page size up according to the full width of your multi-hoop size so i'm going to do the small one first that i don't have so that will be a 10 centimeter that will be a 17 centimeter width by a 10 centimeter height which is the same as saying 10 by 17 but on its side and i want that in centimeters actually i actually want it in millimeters i want it in millimeters so 100 millimeter nope 170 by 100. Okay, if you recall, I said that this particular one is a 4x4 four four or a 10 by 10 centimeter by 
10 centimeter or 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter overlapped. So we need to build two. We need to set up a design with two 100 millimeter. I'm going to build, draw a square. The square doesn't matter because I'm just roughing it up here in the numbers on the millimeter. That's where I'm going to set my numbers for the size of it. And I want it to be 100 by 100 millimeters. I'm going to make a center line. I'm going to start that line here, over here. And then I'm going to push the control button so that it goes very straight across. Hit enter. Now I have a center line. And we're going to set that center line to be 100 millimeters in length. The height doesn't matter. It's just a line. And if you're getting a big fat black line, go into your stroke style and set your width to about 0.2. That's all you need. We've got our center line. I want that center line to be dead center of that square. So I'm going to first select the center line and second with shift select the box. Very important. Now we're going to go into alignment. It's an object, I think. Yep, align and distribute, that one. Under objects, align and distribute. That's gonna give us this one. My align and the, the relative to, I'm going to go relative to last selected. I want the first selected to be aligned with the last selected, which is the box. I'm gonna go hit this little center button here and this little center button right here. So I'm dead center of my box. I'm going to now unselect stuff by clicking outside, reselect that line, and I'm going to duplicate with Control D, or you can go into your objects layer and you can just duplicate that way. Now that I have a duplicate path, I'm going to make sure this arrow, uh, select and transform objects arrow, uh, arrow uh, selector is selected, and then select rotate clockwise 90 degrees or the other one, either one. Now I have a center arrow, a center crossbar. Okay. Over here on this, on this layer, I'm going to rename this layer to be frames or frame. Now, now that we have that, uh, I'm going to select all three of these. I'm going to push the left shift button and I'm going to select a nice pretty color. Unselect everything and you'll see that everything that I just did is now one color. Go back in there and reselect all three of these things and group. Now that you have it grouped, you're going to drop down again, right click on that grouping and duplicate. Grab a hold of that duplicate. It doesn't matter how well you do this because we're going to align it in a minute. Make sure it's all centered and nice. So we have the left frame and then we have the right frame. We're going to make the right one a little bit different color. I'm going to push the shift again and a nice little gentle color. So now we have two different colors for the left one and the right one. We're going to select the left one. We're going to go back to our align and distribute. If you lost it, it's under objects align distribute. We have our left frame selected. We're going to change this alignment from last selected to page. Now we're going to select distribute align to the left edge and align to center on the horizontal axis, which should already be. Now we're going to select the other central lining box, leave it on page. We're going to align to the right side and we're going to align to the center horizontal axis. Outstanding. So we should be able to select everything and have it the exact same size that we started out designing, which is 170 by 100 millimeters. That's exactly what we have. Outstanding. Now, one more thing. 
we're going to draw one more line in the approximate middle once you select that first spot make sure you push control so that you're good and straight perfectly horizontal up and down create that line we're going to push the shift button and a nice bright like warning color now we have a nice little red line we're going to select that red line stay on our line and add, uh, distribute and we're going to put it in the center of the page and we're going to do just uh, another thing here we're going to right click on this and add layer i'm going to say left we're going to right click this add another layer right we're going to we're going to uncollapse that frame and we're going to select it and move it to the top. We want that frame to be on the top so that when we do our printings, which is a very important part of this, we'll be able to see our crosshairs. So to save this, you're pretty much done with the setup to save this as a template. Go into file, save template, name this. We're going to name this multi hoop. 10 x 17 anything else that you want to fill in is fine and dandy and we'll go ahead and fill in multi hoop as a keyword and save so now i'm going to remove this and i'm going to do the same thing for my 13 by 30. i'm going to do it a little bit quicker when with a little bit less detail in the in the description so i'm going to delete all of this i'm going to leave the same structure of objects because it's pretty much the same okay go into my size here i need 180 by no i need a 300 by 33 300 by 130 so 300 by 130 okay going to build a box and that box needs to be 130 by 180 so 180 by 130 and I'm going to draw oops draw my horizontal oops make sure it's straight by holding the control button hit enter hit my button here that button here Want that to be the same width as my design which is 180 we're going to make sure it's centered so i'm going to go back to my alignment i want it to be sec centered according to the last selected and center and center outstanding select that flip nope my bad uh, control d for duplicate now flip and we're going to set the height on that one to be the height of our box which is 130 and second selected box last selected center center I'm going to select all three of these and go with the same green nope shift select so that we have that same green color Pull that up into a group, duplicate, and control color, or no, shift color. And now we're going to go into align and distribute, which is right there. We're going to align and distribute with the page. We're going to align to the right. We're going to align horizontal center. We're going to align the green one to the left and horizontal center. So now we should have our objects are the same size as our original design. And it is. That's how you know that you've probably got it right. We're going to draw a straight line down the center. Press the control button to make sure it's straight. We're going to hit shift red to make that red. We're going to align it to center and center go into this and we now have our template file save template 
our template is multi hoop uh, 13 x 30 keyword multi hoop all right so now we have the hard part out of the way you design on the left hand side of this red thing the red line and you design on the right hand side of the red line you try not to make anything that you have to cut and match that makes it harder if you put HAP on the left PY on the right it'll make it so much easier so much easier okay so we're gonna do a real quick little happy birthday design we're gonna make sure that we are selected on either the left or the right we're gonna go to extensions ink stitch lettering we're gonna pick a semi simple happy Okay, we're going to go with that. Something real simple. This is simple just because I'm demonstrating purposes. I'm going to grab that. Uh, I'm going to grab the word I just made and we're going to move it. So that the red line is our differentiator. We don't want to have a letter in the middle of that red line. Even if it means you have to set it one side or the other. It's just how it's going to have to be. All right. Now we're going to do another one. Yeah. Another one. And we'll do the same deja vu. Birthday. Figure out where you want that to be so that it looks similar. Yeah, that's what we want. That's actually pretty good. I got my tops of letters going into each other, don't I? All right. So that's so far so good. I'm going to, because we're doing the bigger hoop size, going to make this bigger because why else are we doing the big hoop size right right yeah the way I see it may make more sense to do that I'll have to pull that Happy over a little bit more. Okay, we're going to go with that. So what we can do whenever you're doing this, go ahead and uh, hide your frame and it will hide everything under the frame section. If you want to see what this looks like or if you want to do a... a uh, something with the params hide that frame section you don't want to change that that is not going to be in the in the stitching file it is going to be on the printing which is going to be the most important part of this whole process so hold on we're getting there okay so you can you can hide that frame section if you need to go into params do your params thing Okay, that looks really good. I'm going to go with 0.4 millimeter. I'm going to go with a 0.4 millimeter zigzag spacing. Mostly because I'm not doing this as a production. Uh, I'm not doing this to make somebody's birthday happy. I'm doing this as a video demonstration. Okay, so if you need to bring your frame back. And we're going to make a balloon.
Doesn't look much like a balloon, does it? We need to get rid of that outline. Change it to a nice pink or a blue if it's a boy's birthday or a girl's birthday. We want to change it to a to a blue like a boy's birthday. And we're going to draw a little tail coming down. Black light is fine. I actually want that to be 0.2. Give that a dotted line. Go into extensions, ink stitch params. And we'll give that a once over bean stitch repeat. That'll make it look more like a string. So I'm going to grab both of these. Hit control D to duplicate. Drag them over here. Give them a little flip over. We're going to do the same thing on this other side. Grab just that string and grab that. We're going to make it just a little bit longer. I think I'm going to grab that one and pull it over too. Same as this side. Okay. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna save this. This is this is a challenging part, I guess. We need to save this as a left hand uh, file and a right hand file. That's why you have that's why you have this. Now we haven't filled out anything in the right hand file yet. So left. What we're gonna do is okay there's your right hand balloons we're going to move that into the right hand side and lettering can be tricky because if you start moving lettering around like we want hday 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 and we want to put that in the right hand side it's going to start doing strange things like that. So to avoid that, anytime you have lettering, what we're going to do is we're going to take both of these ink stitch letterings and we're going to duplicate. Now that they're duplicated, we're going to put the duplicates into that right hand side. Now everything still looks all right, right? On this left side, we want to delete anything that's going to be showing up on the right side so on the right side is hday from there to there we're going to highlight those and delete same thing with the happy uh whatever shows up on the right hand side we need to delete okay so now on the on the left hand side we've got B I R T and H A on the now on the right hand side we need to get rid of whatever's on the left hand side. So on the left hand side is B I R T. So B I R T is going to be deleted and the happy H A on the left needs to be deleted so now to see that you've got things in the right order the easiest way is to hide the left there should not be nothing in the left hand side hide the right there should be nothing in the right hand side now we're almost there all right we really are almost there. So, when we save this, we need to hide the frame. We need to hide the right side. And I'm going to save, I'm going to save the project. Just always save your project, like in this case, main.svg. 
because if you need to edit one side or the other, it's extremely difficult to edit a finished embroidery file instead of the raw, the raw data. So now that we're to this point, we're gonna we save it like a backup save. I'm gonna file. I'm gonna go to file, save as. I'm gonna save as left dot whatever you're saving as embroidery. I am gonna do this on a brother flatbed. I'm gonna save as left dot pes. Okay. Now hide the left, show the right. And we're gonna save this as save as. We're gonna save as right dot pes and if you're doing a up and down you can say you can save as top pes bottom pes whatever however you see it in your mind do what you got to do now okay we're not quite done with the setup this is going to be actually very important on the left we're going to draw a little dot Something about like that. Uh, see how big that is. That's probably big enough, I guess. We're going to make it a not stroke, make it all fill. It needs to be a bright color. So that when you print, you can make sure you see it. And I might just go ahead and okay because you're going to be printing this whole thing and you need to be able to see your cross lines and you need to be able to see uh the red dot that we're making right now so what i'm going to do is i need that red dot to line up with the actual design so we're going to hide the frame again we're going to group everything that's not that red dot. So now we want to select the red dot and second select that group we just made. Go back to into your align and distribute. We're going to align the red dot to the last thing we selected, which is the group of design. We're going to select center vertically and center horizontally. That is the center of that design. Very important that this part's very important for all of this to work. Now we're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to duplicate that red dot, move it into the right. I'm going to take everything else. I'm going to take everything. I want this to be up at the top. Okay, so we're going to take everything else that's on the right and group it. So now I'm selecting my red eclipse, ellipse, and second selecting the everything else grouping we just made. And we're going to align that first object to that last selected object, center, center. Ah, sweet. Very important. This part's very important. So we need to be able to see the red dot. This center line right here is going to play a big role where this red line and that green lines cross. That's going to play a big role. And those two dotted two dots that we just made, those are all going to play a big role in what happens next. So we want to go to extensions, go to ink stitch, go to visualize PDF export. Yes, you want your frame showing, you want your red center dot showing, you want everything showing when you do this print PDF. Okay, on this PDF, you want to go into settings if you don't have a overview. Go into settings, uh, select your operator overview, hit that X. So now I have this. You want to select this, see the scale is 66%? No good. You want this 100%. 
the things that are important that are on the screen the whole thing does not have to show up just like you see here i'm missing a balloon on this side missing part of the balloon on this side it's all good it's all fine the things that are important is the center cross of the page and the little red dots that you just made if those are showing up this printout will work just like it is if something's not showing up one of those three important things either the center line or one of these two little centering center of each side dots if that's not showing up you will have to do a multiple page and tape it together most of the time this will work those are the only three things that have to show up when you hit that 100 percent scale make sure that says 100 percent scale on it very important i'm going to save this save this to a pdf I'm going to name it uh, split dot PDF and hit save. We're going to we're going to open that up. So I'm going to print this and I don't want it printed. I've got two pages and I've got the operator instructions here and then I've got the rest of it here i don't want this to be printed front and back i need this to be printed on two separate pages so uncheck that two sides and print okay i think that we are ready to go try this out all right so once again we are in our super secret bunker embroidery bunker so with the printing that we made sure was a 100% scale, once that prints out, cut it along the border edge that we made and also printed so that you have something like this. And then once you've done that, take it and punch through the holes that we made. I hope you can see that there's holes, that I put holes where the, the little alignment dot is. So you see those two holes? I hope you can see that. So you want two holes. You want to put a hole in that. And then we're going to... I've already got my piece hooped. This little this little uh, loose piece down here in the corner won't hurt anything because it's not production piece, mostly. But what you want to do is you want to get that lined up real nice. Hold it down. And then take one of these magical disappearing inks and you want to put a mark where each one of those holes is that's going to be very important to make sure that that's where you're lining up to do your stitching and i'll show you that i'm going to have to set the phone down for a minute so i'll be right back okay so i made my two marks that's my left hand center design and that's my right hand center design i'm going to throw it in the machine I'll be right back okay so i have it in the machine and you can maybe you can make out my little dot there it's not quite lining up so we're going to work on that okay so i'm going to put my foot down i put my foot down i put my foot down i'm going to put <laughs> i put the embroidery foot down and then i need to line it up to that dot see that dot coming into view that's why I said this is part of the most important part is that printing you want it to be as close to dead center of that that needle going straight through the center of that dot as possible so I'm gonna go ahead and put some thread in here and get started on stitching okay so the first half the left side is done i'm going to pop it out from there and we're going to move it to the other end which is there now we're going to we're going to pop out of where we were and now we need to load up the right side
Okay, now I'm going to put the foot down. I'm going to put my foot down again. We need to line that up with our dot. Just like we did on the other side. So I hope you can see that, but it looks pretty lined up. That's pretty close to what we had on the other side. And we should be able to run with it. Uh, hit embroider. And hit go. Looks like it's going to be a win to me. Absolutely almost flawless. That is, that turned out, actually, honestly, that turned out better than I thought it was going to. <laughs> but yeah, I am super happy with that. Let me, let me get it out of that, got it out of the frame. I am super happy with that. There's the multi-hoop frame that it was in. And there's the final result. Absolutely flawless. So I would rate that an absolute success. I am very happy with that outcome. A uh, couple of key notes. In the future, you can do this without that frame around it. I created that frame to help you visualize what's going on by showing you that there are two 5x7s side by side and overlapped. Same thing on the other the smaller design. That's a 4x4 four four on each side with an overlap. That's all that's there for is to show you exactly how that multi-hoop works in this case in my case it's two five by sevens side by side and overlapped you can do it without that frame however i would strongly suggest that you keep that red center line and that red center line can be center line of your page and have a left and a right just like here but you can you can get away with doing it without the frame. I just wanted that to be more of a visual understanding. Keep the frame, lose the frame, however you want to do it, it'll work. I do recommend you keep that red center line though, just so as to make sure that you understand that there needs to be a left hand and a right hand side. Super important, absolutely important to this to the way this design works is that centering of the left side design and that centering of the right side that is centered to the design the entire design of the right side in order to center it to the entire design of the right side you absolutely have to group everything into its own group so that that group becomes the object that you're centering to same thing you know, same thing on the left side. You have to put everything into a group so that you are centering to that group. When you load a embroidery file into your machine, it is going to center it according to the design, not according to the page that you're designing it on. That's just how embroidery, embroidery machines work. So you have to, that's the only way that you can get both sides lined up that is your lineup for each side to keep both sides aligned that's exactly what that is without that dot aligned on its arbitrary side you can't line it up side by side as far as i know however great success uh, one last thing that i would definitely want to mention 
if you're doing the uh, design that I the the size that I did the the 13 by 18 mil, uh, centimeter uh, that is a five by seven you have to tell the machine you're using a five by seven hoop the machine needs to think you have a five by seven hoop in there because technically you have a five by seven plus a little more so tell the machine you have a five by seven hoop same thing with the other one the 10 centimeter by 17 centimeter you have to tell the machine you are using a uh 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter or four by four hoop tell your machine that you're using a four by four hoop if you're using a four by four plus four by four hoop because it has to think you're using a four by four hoop for it to work so the last little note that i can think of for signing off is once you load up your when you load up inkscape to do your next design and if you saved it as a template like i showed you to do all you have to do is go in here and select new from template and if you scroll down right here's the multi hoops that i made and you can select the whole the multi hoop that you made and then select create from template and it will load up the template you saved ready to go ready to design your multi hoop template anyway i think this one's done if you have questions throw them in the comments until next time thanks for watching